July. So it's the end of the year. I really want to make a video wrapping up my art year, doing a little bit of it reflecting. I feel like that is something you typically do at this time of year. Well, I have anyway. I've made a list. I have checked it twice and I think I have all the stuff on it. It's kind of short. Now this year, 2023, was not a very good art year for me. I produced very little, had very little inspiration. Because of that, uh, and if you don't know, I have been sick. Uh, I, I don't know what I've been sick with, but I've had a fever for over a year. Lovely. Um, <laughs> but I feel like the art supplies uh, and the art I have made have meant all the much more. Um, not that I have been better or I've been special in any way. It's just the joy of creating that has meant so much more. So I really want to sort of highlight the things that I have been using. Now, as you can see, I have plenty of art supplies in all shapes and sizes, a lot of watercolour, uh, but I thought I was going to really just highlight the things that I have been using the most and really enjoyed but I would say I have used pretty much everything I do have because I cannot stick to one medium anytime really <laughs> so but these are just like the stand out that um, if I were to have to just pick these I think I could make it to do now keep in mind I do own my own business where I make handmade watercolors so I'm sort of like I'm not counting those because like I'm using those. <laughs> now, my handmade watercolours, I have them on my desk in these big black tins. I have four. I'm going to uh, give you my favourite watercolours at the end that I have made myself. But first, we're going to start off with the humble pencil. Now, um, a few years ago, I went on a quest <laughs> to find the best sketch pen. Uh, let's just call it that. I tried uh, like uh, pencils that you sharpen and lead pencils and uh, thick and thin, different, uh, you know, I, I wanted to try them all sort of. But I found the humble pencil. It's not that humble because it was quite expensive. Um, but this is a Tombow monograph. Partly it has a lovely colour <laughs> and when you shake it, uh, it shoots out the lead. You can also twist up here to get more or less eraser. It's just a pencil. It's 0.5, uh, but I love it. It fits really nice in my hand. I've come accustomed to the shake and now when I'm using different pencils and I keep shaking, I'm like, oh, I should not be doing that with others. But I found it and um, I just I just really like it. I like the weight of it. I like how it feels in my hand. It sounds so silly because it, it's just a pencil. A next thing, uh, speaking of pencil, but uh, for the pencil that needs sharpening, a trusty sharpener. Now, I have bought many of these and that is definitely a downside to them that you sort of need to replace them. I do wish you could just replace the the blade that you do on your regular sharpeners but I just I just love that you can decide how long you want the tip um, especially when you work with color pencils and you have very soft colors like the Prisma colors or really hard one like the polychromos you can change how long you want the lead and I just oh, they're so good it's so good now another thing you definitely need while making out is somewhere to do it. Usually a surface sketchbook maybe. And this year I have been working a lot, a lot. When I have been making art I have done that in my sketchbooks and I have two favourite ones that I, I, I have been making art and painting for years and years and years and I, I feel like I have found my happy place with these two sketchbooks. I have one for watercolour or wet media and I have one that is pretty much everything else. Um, I'm really, really happy with both of these surfaces. And I feel like 
a way to tell that you're happy with the sketchbook, for me anyway, is that I'm not afraid to use it. Like a sketchbook for me is a working tool to test out things, to um, to swatch and make a mess, um, but also being able to like go follow through with the whatever you're painting and not feeling like the paper is hindering you to create what you want to. But it's not as precious that you feel like I can't waste this paper. With that being said, I have found my happy medium for watercolour. It is this one. I'm showing you the back just so you see. Like it comes, it comes black. Uh, this one I have just smeared some paint. That is a standing theme year, this year, and I will keep talking about that in a little bit. Now, this is a Sea White of Brighton sketchbook. It's called a plein air sketchbook, and it's a 350 GSM with 20 sheets in it, and it's just it's just good. Uh, it's nothing special. It's not cotton or specially treated or anything. It's just a really good watercolour sketchbook that will allow you to do really good watercolour. Not the best. Like, it's not cotton paper, but it, it's good enough and it's perfect for a sketchbook. I'm not afraid to waste paper, but it allows me to do my watercolour the way I want to. And that's all I can ask for, really. I did not like ring-bound journals before. Did not at all. But I do really like the paper. And what I have come up with, and this is my fifth, maybe, that I have been using. So I have used, yeah, four or five of these. So I can feel, I feel like I can heartily recommend it. Uh, but what I have done is I've just taken a paper that is the same size and laminated it. I then punched holes and snipped through. And that means that I can sort of attach this paper uh, and then when I'm working on something, I can attach, attach the paper here so it protects the paper underneath while I'm working on something here and that has been working really really great. Now that I'm switching pages I just rip this out and change it to another page. It means that I can work on just one page and I'm so happy with that. Uh, it works so well and this piece I have used for like five sketchbooks so it does keep for a really long time. The other sketchbook that I want to talk about is my dry medium. I do use watercolour and acrylic and all of that stuff in it too but it's not it's not made for it. I have two and I cycle through them, use them at the same time. There is no uh, like use this one before that one. I, I use them both. So I have this one. So these are from Royal Talons and they're called Art Creation and I have them in A4. So I have this lovely minty colour <laughs> and then the other one is a craft one but I have painted and this is just a scene from from Scotland uh, it's a photo from my mom she's a photographer so I just I nicked her photo and put it on my sketchbook these uh, come with a lot of pages and the pages have this let's see if I have something that is See, so the paper here is definitely like a cream color, uh, but I am I still get shocked by how much these journals can take. Watercolor, um, gouache, acrylic, um, you take it really, really well. Uh, alcohol does bleed through, like, but it just it's just a really good workhorse sketchbook, and I put everything in here proper like art like I'm actually trying and making an effort uh scribbles doodles um journal like just journal stuff in and they are not pretty like they don't have like a theme to them or a finished artworks and that kind of stuff these are just working sketchbooks to get ideas down and I'm so happy with that because that's what I need I need a place to just Put it down and these have been such a game changer uh having them and i don't um have a favorite 
or like saving that one for that. Um, I just take whichever one is free. When I, like whenever I have acrylic paint left over, I just take one of these and smear it on the pages. Have I more acrylic paint? I open the other one and do the same, and that gets foundations for next pages. Uh, and it's been working so well and makes me so inspired. So I just love how I'm using these books. Speaking of, <laughs> I have been using quite a lot of acrylic paint actually, and I have been sort of sticking to this brand, um, partly because it's really easy for me to get a hold of. And I have now been using quite a lot of them and I'm really liking them. And I just feel like it's nice to have the same brand because I know the, the finish looks the same. I mean, I have had acrylic paints. I have quite a lot. Like I have bought throughout the years and, um, but I sort of got a little bit annoyed that I had a lot of different, not that it was different brands. I don't really bother about the brand, but they had different finishes. Some were really thick, some were really loose, some were really shiny, some were really matte. And it's just really nice when I'm working, like I know what finish because it's the same on all of them. And then if I want a, a matte finish or a, a very glossy finish or something, I can mix that with different mediums and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, but I really like the quality and the pigmentation of these. And I know I can easily get a hold of them. I can get the same color over and over. Another set that I've been using a lot this year, um, that I didn't actually buy this year, but I've used it a lot this year. It is the Neo Color One from Karen Dash. I think <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised how much I really like them. I I bought them on a little bit of a I didn't know if I was going to because just considering like how expensive they were, like how how could they possibly be worth that kind of money for a crayon? I know it's called permanent wax pastel but I was like mm, I don't know but I did buy I did buy the big set and um, I just love them I love them so much and I just keep reaching for them I love how they I, I, love, I love the colors like how vibrant the colors are I love how they layer on top of each other I love how they layer on top of other mediums um, I I prefer the Neo Color ones just because I don't want them to activate with water because usually I do watercolor and all of that but with these I can use them sort of like a resist technique too uh, and often I go in with these at the end um, to get that sort of crayon look or that kind of effect. Um, I have a few of the Neo Colors too and I do have to say like just comparison on drawing on paper I do think the Neo Colors too are softer they're a bit more like butter <laughs> um, but I don't want them to react with water I want to be able to go over with watercolor later I have been using them quite a lot like I said I, I love using different mediums when I'm painting so it's and I, I usually go in with these at the end and I feel like I use them so much all the time but can't really and now I've broken them too okay so they don't keep for throwing them on the floor <laughs> if I were to lose them <laughs> or throw them on the floor I would definitely buy them again because I just I just really like them and it is a, a, some form of combination of being able to use them um like they look nice on their own they're creamy and like they're nice to lay on top of each other but they're also really nice to lay on top of different mediums and for now when I'm doing a lot of different, just having fun playing kind of stuff, it's definitely worth it. The last two items I want to talk about are pencils and they're both from uh, Durant. I'm going to start with something that I bought new this year because this is, I think, one of the few things I actually bought this year and it is a set of 12 graphic tint pencils. I bought this set because I wanted a new um, uh, aubergine, do you say that? Aubergine, aubergine, number three, aubergine. 
dorm. So I had used those two a lot. Um, I think I think I had some bad luck with the first ones. A lot of the lead broke and that kind of stuff. But I used the Storm and Aubergine a lot. And I thought I'm going to get the the 12 set when I when I bought it because I couldn't find I couldn't find them open stock in Sweden. So I decided to get the 12 piece set. And I've used them a lot when I do like sketching or underpainting. And now when I have bought these, I'm actually using the cocoa and chestnut. So the brown ones. I'm using those quite a lot. And you can see like they're hardly like they're all really, really long still. And I find I hardly ever need to sharpen them because I just use them for under sketching sort of. So I feel like they're they're really lasting a long time and hopefully as long as I don't break like the lead inside them they should last me a long time uh, but I just I really like them. I was a little bit hesitant to buy like the the big set because when you buy like the big sets you're like will I actually use all of them and like I don't I have swatched all of them but like I have hardly touched the the black midnight black I haven't touched that one but the other ones I have so yeah the last pencils I want to talk about uh, I have sharpened a lot <laughs> and it is my set of Derwent drawing pencils and I love them now this is a very like a small line of pencils for Derwent uh they go like they have like massive color ranges in all of their pencils but the drawing pencils is a small run. They are just amazing. Like the color family and the uh, like the softness. It just like I just love them. Uh, I use the yellow ochre the most obviously. Um, so I definitely need to buy that one again. They are just they're just amazing. They are amazing. Just like the feeling when you're drawing with them. I just I just love them. Uh, really great on dark paper on black paper uh, they're just I, I don't know um this is one of the few stuff I keep on my desk like pretty much all the time I'm always reaching for some of these pencils I also feel like it's such an easy set because there is so limited colors and they are muted to I just <laughs> so I keep reaching for them and they are really nice, like they go over gouache and acrylic and, and all of that. So they are like nice mixed media pencils. The white is top notch. You have listened to me talk about all the amazing art supplies. Well, the art supplies that I feel like have really give me the boost this year that I have kept reaching for over and over. So I thought I was going to round off, tell you about the colours that I have used myself the colors i have used the most for my own making from my own watercolor series now i don't want to play favorites but i definitely have favorites say so, like it does shift from season to season obviously depending on sort of what you're painting but i would say on the whole um there are a few colors that i just keep using over and over again i'm going to tell you which ones they are doesn't mean that I don't like the others just as much. It just means I use these more. Like these are like the workhorse, uh, the foundation. <laughs> um, yeah, and I also feel like some of the colors I use the least or look like have been bleached it's just because I'm using small details of them. I would say, especially like, okay, a little bit of a side tangent, but le the colors that I've made like a Shannona, the stars, and that are um, interference pigments that sort of shift colors. They are amazing, but I hardly ever use them for like painting a whole background. I usually usually use them just like for splatters or tiny details and that kind of stuff. So, with that being said, the colors that I keep reaching for over and over is because I make my own watercolors. I can make them how I want to and I would say Agnes is one of my all-time favorite. Agnes is a combination of three pigments that has not been mixed together, they are just swirled together. 
and we have a really heavy granulating black and then a granulating brown and then a chunky gold. Oh, so pretty. And I put that in a lid. I love using this as a background color. And you're like, that's weird. But just using it like lightly, you get this amazing warmth from the brown pigment that is most of it. And then that sort of heavy black granulation sort of gets that sort of stony effect and then this gold shine. And it's just, I just love that. Um, of course, I, I like to use it like more like as a color um, when I do uh, especially a lot of uh, words, like gravel, roads, stone, like nature, like I made it to look like uh, a type of stone we have here uh, and I, I use that quite a lot but just like doing it as a foundation just to warm up the page I love that so I have a, a big bunch uh, and also because I like to use it as a background I put it into this just so I could get my my chunky brush in here so I would definitely say like Agnes is like I, I will not stop making this color. It's like it's a, a foundation color for for the studio now. <laughs> then we have Belladonna. And Belladonna is is black. That's sort of the first impression you get. Now Belladonna is actually black it's actually blue and brown mixed together. So you do get that sort of shift. In the color when you water it out which I love but if you just use it as a mask tone you get that sort of blackness and what I really like about as always when you have a really rich dark deep color you can make like a whole painting using just that color as a value going up and down in the, in the value scale for that I think I can never stop using it because it is such a nice color it's so good to mix with others if you want it deeper or yeah um, so Belladonna is one of my my greatest hits, I suppose, because I just keep using it. Same thing with a very old colour that I made many years ago. It's Darcy. And Darcy is also uh, a colour that you can use quite a, uh, in a quite range. Not as deep as Belladonna, but you can still use it quite a lot in different values. Um, it has a little... A lot more granulation because we have ultramarine blue in Darcy and I just love you have that sort of dark palette dirt color I just love the sort of a bit murky colors without getting like the muddiness of it a dark color but with granulations they have a little bit of life in it looks amazing when you just uh, have a thin layer of it uh, for a background maybe uh, but you can also build it up and get a lot of value from it. And I just, I just really like how much life and someone is, hey, I have fried my poodle with a bone. So hopefully we can finish this. Another colour that I keep coming back to over and over again is Albert. Now, Albert is obviously named after my poodle. His name is Albert. Uh, but it is uh, a burnt sienna and I just feel like every watercolour palette needs sienna because they're just so good. How boring brown colours are, they are just, they're just really good. So yeah, and Albert is my version of uh, a traditional uh, burnt sienna, yes. Another colour that I keep coming back to is Lucia. Also, it's, it's a colour from the first year of making watercolours. And it was named after the tradition we have here <laughs> just before Christmas, where uh, we have a Lucia coming with, with light. And I thought it was perfect. So Lucia is my version of a, just a traditional pure gold. Uh, I have quite a lot of different golds and... Um, in different going from a really cold yellow one to the more traditional like cold gold and then all going almost all the way to copper and uh, I find gold can be quite tricky depending on what you want uh, to achieve with them um, and some are really particular like in what kind of hue they want the gold 
Uh, but I feel like Lucia for me is that sort of just right, that the Goldilock version. Uh, I do really like the Ginny gold I have that is a little bit warmer. I also like Gloria that is a little bit cooler. Um, but I just, I keep coming back to that first gold I made and I just feel like it's so, so shiny uh, and so, so creamy and I just like, it's just gold, like it, it's gold and um, yeah, I keep refilling it in my, in my palette because, so yeah, that is my favourite stuff from this year. Um, I do of course, as always, hope that 2024 will bring more art and especially more more inspiration and more that sort of urge to paint. Um, I am on a new medication, which I sincerely hope will work so I will get a little bit more energy because I think that is the thing. Uh, for me anyway, I've been feeling so poorly. Uh, of course, my body is like, we, we can't really put resources into inspiration. You have to sort of manage bodily functions first. Um, but I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better. If that is placebo, I will take it. I'll take the placebo effect if that is what it is. I'm just really excited and hopeful for the new year. I just want to start making more stuff and uh, today, sitting here with the with the stuff that I've been using the most, I'm like, I'd, I'd really like the uh, the art supplies that I've been using and the pieces that I've been able to make with them. And I have so much more around me that I really have no limits, really. Um, and I was actually on a, on a website before, like checking some new art supplies. And I haven't done that in in forever because I haven't felt inspired. And now I'm like, yeah, bring it on. And um, just that feeling means everything to me. So yeah, um, but that's what I've been doing the last year. Hopefully we can make a new video next year, and I will have so much more to share. <laughs> uh, but yeah. If you have tried any of these art supplies, please let me know what you think of them. Or if you have any art supplies that are like, this is the best, please let me know. Because now when I'm like, I'm feeling it. I'm like, I want to try everything. So please let me know if you have something like, try that. Because I feel like in the mood to try some new stuff and really get back into it properly. So thank you so very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon.